Hello. Hi, Z. Hi, Isabel. Hey, Heppo. Hey, Jeff. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome, everybody, to another session of Facebook Live on Moog. <laughs> How are you doing, Isabel? I am doing okay. And so, Kathy Savai posted earlier that she got an error code minus 11 on upload. What does that mean? So typically that means that either something is corrupt in the manifest or usually one of the scans. Uh, if that happens, you have to contact us and we'll help you manually uh, upload. Sometimes we do have to delete one of the scans though. So yeah, contact support will help you out. Is there a list of the camera error codes that, that we can read about? Uh, there's currently not. Because I think I got a, a seven up error once. Yeah. That was exciting. So typically if you get the ups and downs, like five up, seven up, uh, you can just reboot and hopefully that would, cl that'll clear it. If not, then you have to contact support. Will the camera then give you a soda if you get a seven up error? <laughs> yeah. Out pops a can of seven up. How did you know that, Isabel? <laughs> it's a secret. Shh. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Hi, Carl. Thanks for joining us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what kinds of other error codes are there besides the ups, downs, and mids? That's about it. There's um, one other one which lists like it has a bunch of numbers with separated by commas, like four of them in a set of parentheses. And that one typically mm -hmm. means that you're moving the camera too fast, that it was still aligning, and you, should, you need to wait between scans. So when this says okay to move camera, it's not really okay to move camera? Yeah, no, it is. Sometimes people move it before that. Oh, okay. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Robin. Hi, Mikhail. I got a few people joining us today. All right, we're ready for questions. <laughs> <laughs> So there's still a lot of reports about issues with capture, and I don't know if it's people's imagination from the previous bug, or are there specific issues that are isolated? I was wondering if Kurt's team has a um, list of reported problems by iPad type. Oh, I've not heard of that. I can look into that and see. Um... So everybody knows that when we launched 3.0.4 version of Capture, uh, there were some people who had issues with that. We quickly launched 3.0.5, which fixed that. There are some people who are still having issues once they upload to 3.0.5. In that case, you should back up your data and reinstall, and that seems to clear it. But are there the people having issues, and also people having issues with the previous edition, unable to upload? I'm wondering if people having issues are using specific kinds of iPads. Right. Yeah, so it not, would be interesting yeah. to see like what iPads that the and development team tests with, so that we know what's absolutely great that's tested, and what is what iPads are most prone to problems, so that right. people can watch out and maybe not upgrade if. Um, so I don't believe that issue was caused by the type of iPad that you have. It was something mm. else. So, yeah. Hi, Harry. Oh, there's my friend, Ocean, Ocean Fure Visca. She's doing, <laughs> she's doing this beautiful scan of this whole, like, village. And she would like to blur un things that she chooses herself in the virtual ah, tours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is something that has been uh, logged as a feature request. Uh, and maybe one day we'll have the ability to do that. Hi, Sherry. How are you? The uh, April tags, um, like at one point, it was listed as a potential blurring feature in a long ago version of Capture. Yeah. Is it coming back? Uh, so they're working on that. It's just a really hard problem to solve because you've got from different scan points looking at the April tags. Right, uh, right. So, yeah, uh, one of our top engineers is working on that. Uh, I have full faith in him that he'll get mm -hmm. it working. Yay. Mm -hmm. What else is he working on? <laughs> a lot of things that he doesn't tell me about. Ooh, secrets. 
<laughs> yeah, Debbie, if you're on version 2.5 of Capture, you should definitely upgrade. The reason is because as we uh, go through the different versions, there's little incremental changes. And if you start jumping from one that's like really old to a current one, you can run into problems. So it's always best to upgrade when you can. I know some of you out there don't want to do that as soon as the new one comes out, which is totally fine. But after a week or two, when things are all stable, I s strongly suggest you keep up to date on your version of Capture. Oh, Neil makes a good point. Maybe it's not the kind of iPad that you have that's causing problems. So some people are on older versions of iOS. So maybe uh, yeah. their incompatibilities because people are not updating their iOS, or maybe they're preemptively uploading, upgrading to a version of iOS that Capture does not support. Does that Capture support the latest version now, or should not we yet? Still know? Okay, not until it comes out of beta. Um, so my understanding is the issue wasn't anything to do with the vert the version of the iOS that you had or the iPad. It had something to do with the data. And, and I don't know all the details, but it was this, something with the, your data. So, so yeah. when these things happen with capture or showcase, when a large pool of people report that they, they can't do something, mm -hmm. uh, it would be unhelpful if the development team, when they fix it, uh, can report back on, hey, this was you know, happening more often to people in these kinds of situations. Okay, good feedback. I will give them that feedback. Thank you. Hey, Christian, how are you? Hi, Farah. So would you, Harry wants to know, would you say that the 3.0.5 is uh, safe for him to upgrade to? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't upgraded, <laughs> just please upgrade <laughs> now. <laughs> Well said. Well said, Neil. <laughs> Just bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Go ahead and upgrade. Hi, Jorge. <laughs> Hello, girls. He's saying Hello, hi to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything new and exciting out there, Isabel? No, no. So uh, yesterday, someone reported that the OK to move camera is taking much longer than usual. And so today I'm re-scanning a place that I scanned uh, while using the last version of Capture. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing if, if there are any changes that other people are reporting since the space is the same and the only thing that changes is Capture. And do you remember how long it took you when you first scanned it? I mean, it was normal. It was, you know, normal to, there was, it was unremarkable. So if there's anything different today, then I'll know that the only thing that changed is the capture because the mm -hmm. camera is the same. The space is the same. I'll be scanning at the same time of the day. Yeah, that'll be so. good information. So let us know. Definitely. Hey, Chris Petraco. Hello. Nice mm -hmm. to see you. All right, so we got a lot of people joining. Where are the questions? <laughs> <laughs> We're ready and waiting. Ravi Betty is not here to ask about Oculus Go today. <laughs> <laughs> but we have we have Justin on. Where's yeah, Justin? We do. Oh yeah, he goodness. was. He popped on, I think. I don't know if he's still there. We can't see you. Yes, we can, Chris. Now that you commented, there you are. We could definitely see you, Chris. You can't hide from us. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so, oh, I, there was, okay, sorry. Uh, 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 no, no, Nintendo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said Italian. No, Italian. sorry. Don't oh, understand. my God. This guy is so cute. Gianni. Love what happened? Guy. Okay, let's translate. Let's translate what he just wrote. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just write to us? Uh, good day, D. And that's all I get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, good evening, D. Unfortunately, I don't speak English and I can't follow you. What are you going to broadcast in Italian? Oh, oh that's hard. Uh, I, we don't speak uh, okay, Italian. Wait. Mamma mia, pizzeria. 
<laughs> pasta. Pasta. <laughs> Macaroni. <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Johnny. That was for you. <laughs> okay. We have an Oculus Go question. Uh-oh. Oh, you'll be putting oh. it in the client's offices. Yeah, the Oculus Go is really good. It, it, it is very impressive. All right, Debbie Denk says, just wondering why floor plans are going to different people when they are from the same place. <laughs> uh, I keep getting my apartment separated in days difference in return. Debbie, there's a team of people that do the floor plans, just like there's a team of people in support. Sometimes you get ones that are quicker than the others, which is why sometimes if you order four floor plans at once, you get them back at different times. Uh, it, it, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> different people work at different rates. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we try our best to get them back to you as quickly as we can, regardless of who's working on it. <laughs> Gianni. Fantastico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Apollo's not here. Otherwise, he can sound like, oh, oh you right. need to have a, a session with Paolo where he can speak oh. both English and Italian. We're trying to get Paolo to come on. We're having technical difficulties because he requires screen sharing. But we will have him come on. That's for sure. Yes. So tell him he needs to he needs to speak Italian part of the time. Okay, we will do for that. The... We'll do that for you, Gianni. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, ten... I thought our Italian was pretty good. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Italian food that we know. <laughs> <laughs> So what feedback have you gotten about Verbo? Uh, so Ted is still having some issues and, and he doesn't feel like they're improving. Are, have you been hearing other people having issues? So in order to upload to Verbo, one, you have to be scanning for some property that's listed on Verbo, right? So not a lot mm -hmm. of, it's not most people who do that. Secondly, when you do upload, remember that once it goes to Verbo or HomeAway, the way they render it is has nothing to do with Matterport. That's their thing. Uh, we just take the panels and upload it and make it more convenient for you. Um, is it is it as nice as a Matterport space? No, because it's not a dollhouse. It's just it's like Google Street View. You're going from pano to pano. Uh, are their panels a little bit wild and crazy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have gotten some feedback about that. We are working with Verbo and Homeway to give them that information so they can make it better. Uh, but remember, that's not within control of Matterport. We are simply making it easier for you to upload all of the panels in um, a space up to their system all at once. And that part is working. People like that part. So are there plans to convince them to, to you know, integrate the 3D aspect more yeah. fully? Like um, on Realtor.com, they have a link on the bottom of their listings, which will pull up in a Matterport space. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. while we would love them to do that, that's certainly not a decision that we can make. Uh, but definitely we are... Um, you know, we partner with them. We're talking to them and working with them. Uh, we have one of our best product uh, managers working with them. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, Mark Shepard is watching from a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got lots of people standing on boats these days. It's a thing. So I'm telling you, a waterproof Matterport should uh, hopefully be in the works. Yeah, no, I I think you and I need to be on that boat, don't you? <laughs> well, maybe Matterport should organize a boat tour, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, Teddy, I will contact you uh, to get you in, uh, a name of somebody to contact within Verbo or HomeAway. I'll work with you on that. Uh, yeah, it, it ha I know that Teddy's had some problems contacting them, uh, but... Get, get in touch with me on the side. We'll work that out. What about Airbnb? Yeah, so um, we don't have anything right now to upload automatically to Airbnb. I don't know uh, anything more than that. 
have a class on one. <laughs> I'm phone scanning. I'm scanning boats. <laughs> We're scanning beautiful vacation resorts. You know, Matterport should rent out a whole beautiful resort and and to teach camera owners on how to scan swimming pools and boats and you know. Yeah, I think we should <laughs> we should get all these MSPs to go to Disneyland and scan Ooh. all of Disneyland. I, I think actually, that's. I have seen scans of some of the rides. They're pretty cool. I think that's something. Is that something that the product management can pursue? Like have a really huge venue and gather different MSBs? Uh, yeah. To have, a, to have a scanning conference where, you know, people would come and scan. and Yeah, that's a great idea. And awesome. I'm going to tell them that. I'm going to be like, this is what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> When playing the walkthrough that include a couple of times since updating cap to capture 3.0.5, when playing the walkthrough that that includes, includes two scan points close together, the first one shows and pans correctly, but instead of advancing to the next location, uh, it distorts and flickers. Okay, first of all, this is not related to capture because capture is the app on your iPad. If it's related at all, it's going to be related to uh, workshop showcase. I have not heard of anything like that, but if Jeff, if you contact support and give us the link to the specific space, we'd be more than happy to take a look at it. It could be that you have some misalignment or something going on, but we would have to look at that individual space. Oh, a cruise. Yeah, we need to go on a cruise. <laughs> All of us. Oh, that All of so us. So much fun. <laughs> mm, so Jackie had heard that uh, Matterport and Airbnb have been having some discussions. Is that, uh, I guess we don't have details yet. Yes. So I have no comment on that. I can't, I, I don't have any information for you. Do you know of any other potential upcoming partnerships? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All these secrets. <laughs> uh, any other questions? <laughs> oh, speaking of vacations, uh, someone posted an interesting project. Uh, Anastasia Timu, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She is doing an MBA project on whether... Um, virtual reality can be used to influence vacation decisions. And so she posted a survey that you should take a look at. She uh, first, she asked you, do you know anything about Tanzania? Would you like to go there? And I don't, it's like, you know, what, what's there, what's there to see. And then she posts a bunch of Matterport tours. And then she asks you again, have you seen these tours? Do you now want to go? Oh, and that's so cool. Yeah. Because you can visit some amazing places from your living room. I mean, I've seen some amazing tours. Yeah. And so she's trying to measure whether seeing these tours, like how what percentage increase is there in interest? So yeah. If she, if her project can show an actual measurable increase in interest, then that'll be great to go and take her study and show it to tourist sites and so that hey, someone did an MDA study on this. You know, if you if we have 3D tours of your whatever, your park, your hotel, to sure. show to yeah. potential visitors, it'll measurably increase their potential of booking with you. So, um, yeah, you should respond to her survey so that she can have the oh. study to share so that you can use it to get more business. I want to be a part of that. How do you <laughs> how do you do that survey? She posted it on, on I'll, I'll look it up and comment on it to bring it back. Okay. I think it's definitely true because I see some of these places that I didn't know existed. For example, there was one where um, they do this whole hotel made out of ice and they do it every year. And they, they had these ice sculpture carvings and it was just phenomenal. And it made me want to go there and I didn't even know it existed. Right. So there are so many places and, and, and it's, nice because I'm looking at it from the comfort of my desk. I didn't have to get on a plane and spend 20 hours flying there, you know, cramped in an airplane. Uh, or I'll look at these spaces that are beachfront property with, um, with a nice pool that looks out into the ocean. I'm like, oh, I just really want to be there. So yeah, 
it works for me. <laughs> so I think that's a great study. All right, so Teddy's asking about converting 360 views to 3D scans. All right, so we have updated our Help Center page, so it shows you how to do that. Basically, you have to take your 360 view, you have to place it, and then when you press on, the, press on it, an option comes up to convert. Now, remember, when you're converting, the 3D data is being inferred, right? So it's not real 3D data that was obtained by the camera. It's being created based on the imagery that the, that the software is seeing. It's not perfect, and it's not, it doesn't work as well outside. So if your idea is to scan a bunch of 360 views outside because you can't use your Matterport camera if it's too sunny, it doesn't always work. Right. I've seen instances where it, it was fine, but I've also seen a lot where it doesn't work. In that case, you're better off scanning as a 3D scan. Sometimes when you're outside like that, it's, they start going crazy and they're misaligned and they're placed in the wrong location. But at that point, at least you have some 3D data. And on the back end, we can try to help you move those into the correct location. So you have a better chance with that than you do converting. Right. So in, in situations where you can't do a 360 to 3D conversion, then you probably would also not be able to scan with a Theta or Insta, right? Because that also is inferred. Yeah. Uh, so I would not do use the Theta. If you have a Matterport camera, I would not use the Theta. Um, because... At that point, number one, you're going to get charged more if you're on a classic plan. Uh, number two, um, it's, once, you, once you put in a theta scan in there, I can no longer fix it for you. Oh, really? So, so yeah. one theta scan, even if I scan like 900 3D scans, just having one theta scan makes the 3D scans not movable? Yeah, so I've seen some cases where it doesn't work, and I've seen some cases where it works. I don't have a pattern per se yet, because I haven't worked on too many of those, uh, but you're always uh, introducing a potential for not being able to fix it. Oh, okay. So... Stick with your Matterport camera. If you've paid for it and you've invested in that camera, use it. it you get but way so if, if I get really weird misalignments with 360 to 3D conversions, can support still fix it? So no, because the 3D data at that point is inferred. And mm -hmm. so it's really hard for me to line them up and know where they go. It's just, it's just a mess. Um, the only reason why I, you would use the 3D conversion, 360 to 3D conversion, is if you want to get the water in the pool because it works for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, but otherwise, <laughs> try it. I'm laughing because Robbie is here. Oh. <laughs> Hi, okay, let's go. Hi, yes, Robbie. indeed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Ted's trying to scan outside. Just go. It works. If you scan inside with your Matterport camera, and you define the walls that are going to now be adjacent to the outside scans, you can go outside and it typically will work. It works better if it's either early, early in the morning or later at night, and it works marvelously if it's in the middle of the night and you put a, um, <laughs> you can put lights on top of your camera, right? So it lights it up. Uh, our camera does really well in the dark. But maybe he wants to show a lovely sunny garden with flowers. Well, then you can go back and take a couple 3D scans um, during the day and just hide all the other ones. But you're, you're doing the ones at night or later and earlier in the morning just to get the 3D data, right, so you can place things. So there's ways to get around it. Um, if you want, you can um, just try a bunch of stuff. I've seen some scans that work great in the sun. But the, the exterior wall that's adjacent to where you're scanning were, was defined. And, and that's what it, it uses. It uses that wall and that data there. Like if there's lots of windows and plants, visual cues to tell it where it's at. So, yep. Cloudy days are good, too. Yep. Early in the morning, later at night works really well. I'm, I'm not kidding. In the middle of the night works the best. <laughs> <laughs> and... I've seen scans of like streets in the middle of the night. It's kind of a nice 
it looks nice. It's like this nice little ambiance. It's you know, kind of romantic. It, I, I like it. So if you haven't done it, go outside in the middle of the street one night. Do a couple scans. You'll see what I'm talking about. I have a question for you about the BLK360. Do you know how to factory reset it? <laughs> no, do you? Do you? <laughs> no, no, because I got, um, there was this, um, Paul Jacoby was saying that he keeps getting a flashing yellow light oh. while trying to update the firmware. And yes, so Paul just... Jacoby, yes. Okay, here's the thing. If, you, if something goes wrong with your BLK, number one, make sure you have a battery that, that is charged, okay? If you don't, switch out for a new battery. Uh, or even if it's like halfway charged, switch it out just in case. Two, the as you're scanning with the BLK, it's saving the point cloud information on the camera. Check that that ca the camera is not full. Uh, I've had that happen before. We had that with Teddy as well. Um, and then reboot it, and that should clear everything. It, um, if not, you need to contact Leica. <sighs> I want to know if iPad OS is supported or will be. So uh, on the, the, the latest um, iOS that you said that are, is not supported yet, oh. will it be supported? Because people are really excited about being able to use Workshop on their iPads. Okay, well, it, not yet. <laughs> not yet. The um, version of iOS has to come out of beta, but I'm not sure that Workshop will work on the iPad. Uh oh, oh no. <laughs> so I did ask somebody about that and they were like, no. <laughs> so I don't know if that was a fluke or what. I can check into that again just to make sure. But from my recollection, it's that that has not, will not change. Use it for fire pit shots. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are so cool. Light a fire and scan. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's a great idea. I mean, those come out just really nice. So, so um, what is about Android Capture? What is the ETA on that? Uh, I think so, there's a lot of yeah. interest. So uh, we are working on that. I don't have any dates, um, but yeah, that's definitely coming. But there was, is there still no plans for an Android showcase app? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> or a Surface one. I had this plan. It was so, so, so sad that they couldn't uh, download uh, it onto their, because their company has like hundreds of Surface tablets and they're like, oh, can we... Um, you know, have our 3D tours offline on our surfaces. It's like, no, Aww. get some iPads. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? But we spend zillions on yeah. these surfaces. Yeah. So perhaps one day in the future. Um, right now they're working on updating the iOS the showcase for iOS app so that it is compatible with showcase 3.0. Oh, and everybody should be using showcase 3.0 workshop 3.0, what we're calling, uh, which is showcase edit mode. Uh, try not to use showcase two or workshop two, if you can at all avoid it. Uh, and if you're running into some problems with showcase three or workshop three, uh, definitely let us know because the deadline for that, for showcase two to be deprecated is coming quickly and we need to know all the issues so we can have them all fixed before that happens. How many collaborators can you have in the professional plan? I don't remember, I have to look it up. <laughs> Hold on one sec, I'll look that up. Do you know that off the top of your head, Isabel? No, I don't. And also, are they the same or different on the old and new plans? Okay, let's look that up, just so I give you the right information. All right, so on the new professional plan, you can have up to five collaborators. On the new professional plus, you can have 10. On the new business plan, you can have 20. And on the new business plus, it's 50. On the classic accounts, 
for the basic classic account, you can have five. For the uh, professional classic account, you can have 20. And for the business classic, you can have 50. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Is this still the case that a collaborator can see all the other collaborators? Um, I believe so, yes. Are there plans to <clears throat> eliminate that because someone mentions some kind of privacy issue? Like if you're working yeah. with 17 realtors, you don't <laughs> want them to, you know, all know who, who the others are. Yeah, certainly um, we are aware of that. And, um, you know, hopefully at one point we'll have more security and sort of things will work a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, that that it's it wouldn't uh, be a surprise if something we were working on something came out at some point, but uh, nothing yet. Nothing to announce. Not about and, security for the scans themselves. Just yesterday, someone asked me like, if they can have a password protected scan of their factory because yeah. they don't want the link to be emailed to, you know, some guy mm -hmm. who's a competitor. Yeah. So you can always keep your space private. Um, which means that nobody can see it unless they log into your account. Uh, and yeah, we are aware that there's people asking for more security. Uh, and certainly that's something that our program management team is looking into. All righty. Looks like we are past 930. Gosh, this went by so fast. <laughs> it's, it's because all of you guys are so much fun. Isabel and I have a blast every week. I, I look forward to this and I, absolutely adore just spending time with you guys um yeah you make my week so and and of course to be with isabel is always fun oh yeah <laughs> so anyway thank you everybody for joining thanks again isabel for spending your time during this half an hour and all the time you spend during the week everybody loves you and appreciates you uh, what more can i say uh we will be here next week same time same place uh have a great week and we'll see you next week bye, bye.